Today we're talking about the four tools you can use to do your own online investigations. Stick with us. This is Tim Santoni and welcome to Risk Mitigation TV. On this show, we wanna help you mitigate risk in your business and protect you from those in your inner circle. Today we're talking about four tools you can use to conduct your own online investigations and avoid detection while you're looking at competitors and researching infringement, counterfeiting, and a variety of other things. Stick with us. The four tools we're gonna to look at today are domaintools.com, the paid version, specifically looking at who is records and how those are useful. Secondly, the Tor browser, which allows you to anonymously surf the web, avoid detection uh, from people identifying who you are and where you are. We're gonna also look at the Wayback Machine, uh, or archive.org, affectionately referred to as the Internet Time Machine. And lastly, we're gonna look at an open source intelligence research tool that's gonna let, let you look at Facebook uh, photos that have, that have disappeared from your subject's profile but may appear elsewhere. Stick with us. So the first tool that I wanna talk about is the Who Is Lookup from Domain Tools. And I'm talking about the paid version uh, of Domain Tools, which is a small access fee on a monthly basis or a yearly subscription fee. The reason I like this is because it allows you to look at current as well as archived information. Let me start off by explaining exactly what a Whois record is. A Whois record is the ownership record for a domain name. It's like the property and title information on for real estate, tracking who's owned and transferred domain names over a period of time. And I find there's some really great useful pieces of information within the Whois record that I want to highlight. So once you log into uh, Domain Tools, you have access to a lot of great data. First off, um, creation date, expiration date, and update information specifically on the domain name that you're looking at profiling, which is great information. Next, uh, if, the, if the domain name ownership record is not privatized, the Whois record is not privatized, the email address will visible will show how many other domain names are registered or associated with this email address. And then you can conduct reverse lookups based on that by clicking right here. Additionally, within the Whois record, contact information about who controls, manages all the domain name information for a client. This right here is the registration for slack.com. You can tell it has a company name. Uh, this can be very useful when you're looking to profile a company and determining who actually owns the domain name and other information about the company. Um, right here in the Whois record, as well as phone numbers, fax numbers, email addresses, and other information on the company and people who may have registered the domain. Another great and useful piece of information is the archived information. This right here is the Whois record for wheelsup.com. As you can see currently, uh, or as of 2010, this domain name was privatized. However, if you look back to 2001, and you look at this record here, you can see that it was registered to Wheels Up Travel in Plant City, Florida, and there's a contact person with, a, with an email address. So if you're trying to acquire or learn more information about this domain name, reaching out to this individual may help you to determine if he currently owns it and if he in fact sold or transferred it to somebody else. So this is a little bit about domaintools.com and the Whois Lookup tool, which is very valuable if you're doing online investigations. The next tool that I wanna talk a little bit about is the Tor Browser. This is a free download, works on Windows, Mac, or uh, Linux. And what this is, is a tool that will, in essence, give you anonymous browsing on the internet. Um, and what it does is it bounces your communications off of a variety of different um, volunteer networks all over the country. And this keeps your location, information, and identifiers anonymous to websites that are tracking users and information in real time. So this is really useful if you're doing undercover buys of infringing goods or counterfeit goods online. It's also really important if you're researching competitors and you don't want them aware that uh, you're on their site. Again, this is a free download Tor browser. I will warn you that because of the way the, the communications are bounced from location to location, that the typical um, speed that you would get are degraded. So you're gonna have to spend a little bit more time, um, but you will be anonymous. So check this out. The next tool I want to talk about is archive.org, affectionately referred to as the Wayback Machine. This is the archived records of websites uh, all over the internet, assuming these were um, not flash generated pages and they were crawled. Wayback Machine is like your internet time machine and it's going to give you archived information about websites that you're looking to research. What's great is that it gives you a timeline of years and frequency of updates as well as a calendar that you can actually click on and figure out what the snapshot looked like at that given point in time. 
Additionally, you can take a look at product lines and description of information at a given point in time and navigate on those pages, assuming that they were cached. This is a cached page of wheelsup.com from February of 1999 and gives you information about what they were up to at that time, phone numbers they were used, any kind of advertising slogans. This is a great place to check first when you're looking at trademark infringement, trademark use, and uses and selling of products and services online. Again, this is the Wayback Machine. You can find it at archive.org. I encourage you to check it out. The last tool or resource that I'm going to go over with you has to do with open source intelligence, which is just a vague way of saying uh, ways to collect publicly available sources uh, in an intelligence context. In this situation, we're going to look for information and pictures and video and content that may or may not be available on someone's profile, but can lead us to include information as to where they've been, what they're up to, and profiling them a little bit further. So um, we're going to be using a tool called Query, um, which is an open source free tool. But first off, we need to locate um, the Facebook profile we want to profile. So we're looking here at Bill Smith. Don't know Bill Smith. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the link to his homepage profile here, and you're going to copy that. And you're going to copy it into Lookup ID. Every Facebook profile has a unique ID or serial number, which you need to develop in order to conduct the search. So we're going to do that lookup here, and it's going to generate this code. We're going to take that code, and we're going to copy it, and we're going to paste it into the Query Facebook tool. Now, if we scroll down here, you'll see there's a variety of things we can search for. Photos of our subject, videos of our subject, places liked. Um, and this includes images and information that are on his profile or on anyone who he's connected with or has posted or linked him up. So let's just do a search here, insert his uh, information, and there we go. All of these pictures. This could include pictures posted by friends, relatives, anywhere where he is tagged. And these photos are not in his profile, but appear on this search, which is a great way to obtain information and intelligence about your subject. People commenting about your subject, where they are with your subject, what activities they're up for. This is great in asset research, locating individuals, family law, domestic disputes, custody disputes. Great, great tool to get what some would refer to as deleted photos or information off of Facebook that could lead you to great, great information in your research of a subject. So again, First, you're going to develop that Facebook uh, homepage link. You're going to generate the Facebook ID, and then you're going to go over here to the query tool. You're going to click on Facebook, and you can come down here and search a variety of things. It's also great at linking two accounts together where you can look at putting in two different um, uh, Facebook IDs and see uh, what posts and information where they show up linked together. Again, I encourage you to check out this tool. It's a great way to uncover open source intelligence, specifically on Facebook. Thank you very much for tuning into the show. If you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe for videos just like this. We put out a new video just about every week. Thank you so much, and we look forward to connecting with you in the comments. And lastly, we're going to talk about... We're also going to look at archive.org, 